I've given you, first of all, some standard furniture measurements that you're going to use for your simple box form drawing. So we're fortunate in that our last assignment is setting up how we will do the remaining two assignments. We're going to go through the same stages, only we have a different room to deal with and different furniture. So this time it's a, a portion of a master bedroom. You've also been given a floor plan and two elevations. And if we were to look at our the drawing itself, when we get it, all the box forms in, you'll see that the numbers on here represent the items on the floor plan. It's very important that we continue looking at how to read these floor plans and elevations. Most of the dimensions are on here, but for some of them, you're going to have to rely on the elevations and the floor plans to get them. So I've put most all of the heights of things, but maybe not all of them. So then you'll have to rely on the elevations to give you them. If we look at the bed, for example, I've given you five feet wide by seven feet long and two feet high. So if you look at the floor plan, you if you count the boxes, the mattress itself is that size and that wide, but there's also the headboard. So it's important for you to know that the headboard is half a foot away from the window wall. And you can't tell that from this form, this these lists, you can't tell that. You have to go to your floor plan to know that. And it's true of everything in here. This will give you the size of the wardrobe, but it's not gonna tell you where it is on the floor. So this is, of course, five feet hovering above everything. It's hovering above the whole floor, and you're able to see everything just from that height and looking down. The light is a dotted line because it's above five feet, but it should really just be a simple diagram. Usually there's a ceiling plan in which you see all your light fixtures drawn like this, but for us, I wanted you to have an idea of how much space it takes up relative to the size of the bed and the size of the bench. It's a large light fixture. Okay, and the built-ins there with a dotted line as well. Now this is uh, an elevation, but it's facing the window wall. If you go back to your numbers again, we can't really actually see the mattress, which is really what the bed is talking about over here, but we can see the footboard. We can see the footboard, and it's um, five feet wide, two and a half feet high, and we can't see how deep it is, but we can on this elevation, looking from the side of the bed over to the wall where the wardrobe is. It's much easier to see on the perspective. We only have two walls. This elevation is for the window wall, so you're looking down from the bed straight back to the window wall. The other elevation, this bottom elevation, it's looking this way from this side of the bed over to the wardrobe wall where the wardrobe and the cabinetry is. So you've got to get that straight because there's only so much a list like this can tell you. And it's the brilliance of all of these things working together that makes this a really remarkable discipline. It, it's really quite remarkable when you put all these facts together with the wow factor. The, as you discovered when you rendered your last assignment, that's where you get a feeling of what it would be like to be in the room, to be in the actual room. It comes to life. Here's your instruction sheet, and it's going to tell you everything that you need to do. Now, if it's not on this list, you don't need to do it. The sizes are all here. Everything is here. I go over as much as I can in the class, but you really need to read them on your own during what you're doing and after what you've done. So make sure that you've done everything. So we're going to have two little quick sketch exercises for you to do to get you familiar again with the two-point perspective grid. And that's what the two little grids in your package today are for. They're meant to help you get those two exercises done. And the instructions are there.
so there's two separate little in-class exercises to do. And they're meant to go rather quickly so that you can get on to the second part, which is making that big box form drawing. I'm going to give you two large grids, and you can use one as backup and one to draw on. And hopefully you can get that done in class today, because after that, you need to go and find your master bedroom reference photos. There's a lot to collect this time. There's a lot in this room, but you also have to make a little title block here for it. You're going to need to put master bedroom at the bottom, have the little floor plan, and your drawing up above. So this is the rendered version, but there's also the line version that comes first, as you know. For next week on your box drawing, you're going to need to have your typeface and just my little floor plan that I gave you sized properly. Just like last time, you need to have that everything sized and ready to go and a person in there as well. So here's, I found a person. This time you're going to find your own person. You're going to look to see if you, what you can find. So if you find her, don't use her. Use someone of your own. Find a a reference picture and go about it the way we did our our figure file trace them and photocopy them so there's a lot to do beyond just the box form drawing this time don't go beyond what is being asked for on these two sheets something to note though is that you're going to also have to put something in one point perspective in there as well so don't forget that and it can be something, it's going to have to be something very small. We don't have a lot of room left, so it's going to have to be small. So it can be a book on the bedside table. It could be um, a cushion on the bed, a large cushion on the bed or the bench, or a planter on the floor. But somehow you have to work in something drawn in one point perspective. And you'll see on our in-class sketches today, it's going to instruct you on how to find that vanishing point. Because you can't use your two vanishing points. You've got to use a single vanishing point. But it's going to show you how to find the vanishing point and uh, how to draw something in one point perspective. So that's the value of these initial sketches that we're going to do. This is also on your evaluation paper. So the evaluation paper it's going to tell you these things, but it's not going to give you much of an explanation. So if you're just relying on the evaluation paper, that's not really enough information. You have to go to the instruction sheet as well. Okay. And this time we're using uh, two mounting papers. One mounting paper is going to have your references and your two in-class sketches. And the other mounting paper is going to have just your box drawing with your title block at the bottom. It's all it's going to have. So it's very important when you set your drawing up, when you set your grid up, turn your, eight and a, your 18 by 24 paper so that 24 inches is the width, and leave 2 inches down from the top of the cartridge paper to the top of your grid. You can center your grid, because both of our vanishing points are, are visible on the grid, but you need to leave two inches down from the top of the page. So if that's the top of your cartridge paper, don't start your grid, don't tape it on until two inches below. So leave two inches. And then you can make it centered in the width. Please also watch the little video clip I've put up about how to create your title block. It'll give you a little bit more information and show you the example more clearly on what is expected for the beginning of class next week.